So there's this thing called the twin primes conjecture. Twin primes are pairs of prime numbers like five and seven or 11 and 13 that are just two apart. In fact, we give that a name, we call that a prime gap. The twin primes conjecture says there are infinitely many pairs of primes like five and seven or 11 and 13. And we think it's true, but we can't prove it. We don't know that it's true. What is trivial to prove is that there are infinitely many prime gaps of infinite size, or if not infinite size, arbitrarily large size, as large as you want. I can show you, we can construct some prime gaps right now. To do this, we're gonna use a special mathematical tool called a factorial. Four factorial, for example, is the product four times three times two times one. So you start at whatever positive integer you have here, count all the way down to one and multiply. The beautiful thing about a factorial is they have lots of factors. Specifically in this case, we must have at least the factors one, two, three, and four. Now, four factorial, if you actually multiply it out, happens to be 24. That's not super important to us, but just kind of leave that off to the side for the moment. Because four factorial has, among its factors, two, that means that four factorial is even. And if four factorial is even, any even number plus another two makes another even number. So four factorial plus two must be even. We can use the same logic to make a number that's a multiple of three. Four factorial itself must be a multiple of three, so when we add three to that, we get another number that's a multiple of three. And finally, of course, four factorial is a multiple of four, and so four factorial plus another four makes another multiple of four. Now, like I said, we know what four factorial is, so it's not terribly hard to actually compute these numbers and prove to ourselves that they are even a multiple of three and a multiple of four. Four factorial plus two, for example, is the same thing as 26. Four factorial plus three is the same thing as 27. And four factorial plus four is the same thing as 28. Even number, multiple of three, multiple of four. What this means is that using four factorial, we have shown that there must be at least three consecutive composite numbers, three numbers in a row that are not prime, somewhere a little bit bigger than four factorial. And this does doesn't only go for four factorial, this goes for any multiple of four factorial. So two times four factorial, for example, two times 24 is 48, lets us construct a new set of at least three composite numbers in a row. 48 plus two makes 50, 48 plus three makes 51, and 48 plus four makes 52. 50 is even, 51 is a multiple of three, and 52 is a multiple of four. The beautiful thing about this process is there's nothing special about four factorial, any factorial will do, and the larger we make the factorial, the longer the string of composite numbers gets. For example, if we used seven factorial instead, we could construct a string of at least six composite numbers in a row. Seven factorial plus two must be even, seven factorial plus three must be a multiple of three, seven factorial plus four must be a multiple of four, seven factorial plus five must be a multiple of five, seven factorial plus six must be a multiple of six, and of course, seven factorial plus seven must be a multiple of seven. Now, it is important to note, the gap might be even larger than these six numbers in a row. That is, we don't know for sure that seven factorial plus one isn't also a composite number. But if it were a composite number, that just means that our gap is actually even bigger. The gap is guaranteed to be at least as large as those six numbers in a row. You can substitute anything you want in for the factorial. For example, we could construct a string of a million composite numbers in a row guaranteed by simply using one million and one, no, that's a hundred thousand, one million and one factorial. One million and one factorial plus two is some even number. One million and one factorial plus three is some multiple of three. All the way down to one million and one factorial plus one million and one, which must be some multiple of one million and one. And so there you have it. That is one million guaranteed composite numbers in a row. Now, one thing to keep in mind, of course, is there's probably a gap of this size way before you get to one million and one factorial, because one million and one factorial is just an absolutely gargantuan number. But the fact that we can construct these out of factorials guarantees that if you go far enough down the number line, you are guaranteed to get a gap of any arbitrarily large size you want, at least that large. It also gives us a good reason to think that the density of the primes gets less as we move further and further down the number line. If we know for sure there must be three composite numbers in a row, every time we see four factorial, remember that was 24, 
or a multiple of four factorial, as we move further and further down the number line, those factorials and their multiples are going to get more and more common. And therefore, we must see a reduction in the number of primes as we go further and further down the number line. There are lots of other good reasons to believe that the primes grow more sparse as we go further and further down the number line, but the fact that we can actually construct the gaps that for sure start separating primes by ever larger amounts, I think is pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Comment down below with your favorite facts about prime gaps, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.